Okay, let's simplify this expression dealing with radicals. And I'm saying like 75% of you that are strong at algebra should be able to do this, okay? Now, if you can't do this, the whole idea behind this video is to learn something. But if you're pretty strong at algebra, you should certainly uh, be able to handle this problem. Now, these percentages, I kind of make these up and these kind of like my gut feeling. But uh, this is not, you know, something that's just trivial to me. I've been teaching math for uh, decades, so I have a pretty good sense about, you know, how many people could handle this problem uh, correctly the first time. So I'm um, just curious. Do you think you can do this problem? Put your answer in the comment section. Now, you need to fully simplify this, okay? Fully, fully simplify it. So if you do it halfway, that's good, but you have to complete this 100%. But uh, I'm going to get into exactly how to do this problem in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything in between. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics, I can help you excel in your math course. If you're taking any test that has math on it, for example, the GED, HiSET, TASC, uh, GRE, GMAT, uh, SAT, ACT, CLEP exam, ACCUPLACER, ALEX exam, teacher certification exam, you get the idea. Um, I could help you prepare and pass those exams, especially the math section, obviously, because that's generally the most difficult section on those exams. If you homeschool, I have a very comprehensive homeschool math curriculum. And if you don't have any math notes, what are you going to study from? Well, you can use my math notes. I'm going to be pretty nice about that. I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. But I'm telling you right now, you must take awesome math notes to be successful in math. There's just no way around it. So just start improving your notes. You'll thank me later. Your, C, your grades will go from C to a B to an A. Maybe you'll just jump from a C to an A. But believe me, you can't get these type of grades without having awesome math notes. Okay, so if you want to go ahead and try this problem, go ahead and pause the video and uh, do it. But I'm going to actually kind of give you a bit of a hint here. Just uh, I'm not going to give you too much of a hint, but I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, the kind of the things that you need to be thinking about in order to simplify this problem. So let's get to it. And you need to understand a couple of things here. Okay, so we have this expression. So you need to be able to simplify something like this. Okay, now the square root of 80 is in our problem. So you need to be able to simplify it. So what does that mean? Well, that's what I'm asking you. You should know this if you're pretty strong in algebra. Remember, in, uh, in mathematics, we want to write things as simple as possible. Like, for example, you wouldn't write 300 over 600 like all the time. You'd be like, oh, 300 over 600. No, we would want to write one half because this is equal to one half okay so this is not a correct way to write a value if we're trying to express if you end up with some numbers like this it's you know um you know your responsibility to fully simplify it's kind of like not an optional thing so your teacher will knock off points if you don't simplify but you definitely need to know how to simplify um, in mathematics and there's a lot of different kind of aspects to it so here we're talking about uh, square roots and radicals or whatnot. So you need to be able to simplify this, and this can be simplified. Now, in addition uh, to knowing how to simplify uh, square roots, you need to be able to address a situation like this. Okay, now, this is not correct, all right? Well, this is not, well, let's just say this is not uh, allowed, all right? Hopefully I spelled that right. So you're not really allowed to write a radical expression this way. Now, why is that? Well, again, if you're pretty strong in algebra, you can tell me why this is, but you, uh, basically, more importantly, I need you to fix this. I need you to rewrite this in a way where it is uh, proper, okay? So, <clears throat> again, these are my two little kind of hints uh, for you. Now, if you don't understand these two things, well, you're probably not going to be able to do this problem, but don't panic. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about here in a second. But if you're like, oh, yeah, I got what you're saying, well, then continue on and uh, tackle this problem. All right, so I'm going to get into the solution. If you don't want to see it, go ahead and pause the video, but let's get to it. All right, so first things first. Um, first thing is I got the square root of 80 and the square root of 45 <clears throat> up on my numerator. Let's see if we can simplify these. So let's start with the square root of 80. The square root of 80, I can write as the square root of the factors of 80. Okay, now 
I'm looking for what type of factors? I'm looking for perfect, squ uh, perfect square factors, okay? Perfect squares are numbers like 4, 9, 16, 25. All these numbers, if I take the square root, okay, I end up with these nice, uh, easy numbers like this, okay? So this is what you want to kind of be looking for. You want to be looking for factors like these numbers here, okay? So in 80, you're thinking, okay, do I have any factors? Now, 4 times 4 is 16, uh, but I've just broke this up as 4 times 4, okay? So if you have 16 times 5, the same thing as 80. That's perfectly fine, but let's just kind of make this point here. I have the square root of 4 times 4 times 5. Well, there's a property of square roots that I can kind of, I have one big square root here. I can pull these together in individual I can kind of pull these apart into individual little square roots here. Okay, so I have the square root of 4 <clears throat> times the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. That's equivalent to the square root of 4 times 4 times 5. Okay, that's a property of radicals that hopefully you know. And now the square root of 4 is what? 2. The square root of 4 right here is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. So this whole thing right here is equal to 2 times 2 times the square root of 5, which is 4 square root of 5. We're going to kind of just disregard all the positive and negative stuff with uh, taking the square root of a positive real number. So we'll just focus in on <clears throat> the positive versions of that. So we got 4 square root of 5. So if you knew that, that's excellent. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue on and take a look at the square root of 45. Again, I'm looking for these perfect squares. I have 9. Okay, so uh, as a factor, perfect squared factor of 45. So 45, you can think of as the square root of 9 times 5. So I can write that as a square root of 9 times the square root of 5. Of course, the square root of 9 is 3. So this is 3 square root of 5. Okay, so I'm going to replace this square root of 80 with this. And I'm going to uh, replace this square root of 45 with this. And then we'll kind of tie in that square root of 3. All right, so that's our next move here. Let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so here we go. The square root of 80, I'm replacing with 4 square root of 5 minus, okay, uh, the square root of 45. We simplified as 3 square root of 5 over the square root of 3. All right, so what can I do now? Well, now I need to understand when I can add and subtract uh, radicals, okay, or square roots. Now, this is a whole other situation, but basically you want to think of things of, as like terms, okay? In other words, think of this almost like as being a variable x. So this is 4x minus 3x, okay? If I have 4 square roots of 5 over here, and I have 3 square roots of 5 over here, and I'm take, I take away 3 square roots of 5 from 4 square roots of 5, how many square roots of 5 do I have? I have 1 square root of 5, right? So you basically we're subtracting 4 minus 3, all right? Now, again, I don't want to um, teach all these concepts. This would be a pretty long video, but uh, if you are strong in algebra, you should be able to understand this, right? So I have 4 square root of 5 minus 3 square root of 5. That's going to be equal to 1, 4 minus 3, or that's positive 1, square root of 5 over the square root of 3. So 1 square root of 5 over the square root of 3 is this. Now, if uh, you think this is the final answer, you're close, okay, but you're not finished. So let's talk about this issue right here, okay? You're not, you can't divide by uh, a square root down here. This is an irrational number, okay? So that's not allowed. So we need to do this thing called rationalize. We've got to rationalize the, de uh, the denominator. So these are all basic kind of algebra concepts that if you are strong in algebra, you're like, oh, yeah, I remember that. So let's go ahead and take care of this. And this, this is our answer, square root of 5 over square root of 3. However, okay, we want to rationalize this so we don't have a square root, an irrational number in the denominator, okay, because we can't divide by that. Now, if you want to know more about this, I have additional videos in my algebra playlist on square roots. Of course, I teach this thoroughly in my algebra course. So the way we're going to do this is we have the square root of 3. I'm going to multiply the denominator by square root of 3. But if I do that, I have to multiply the numerator by the square root of 3 as well, because this right here, if you just look at this, square root of 3 divided by square root of 3 is what? Anything divided by itself is 1. Okay, so I'm just multiplying this thing by 1. So I'm not changing anything. But, I mean, I'm using a nice little fancy one right here, square root of 3 over square root of 3, because the advantage is when I um, multiply two radicals, this fraction, I'm multiplying this way, square root of 3 times square root of 3, 
is going to be what? That's going to be the square root of 9, which is 3. All right, so finally, I was able, able to get rid of my little radical down here in the denominator, and then the square root of 5 times square root of 3 is the square root of 15. So this is the final answer. Now, if you got that right, I mean, obviously, you're in that 75% of strong algebra students, but you should be rewarded with an awesome happy face with the good old 1986 flat top haircut and A+. Plus. And a matter of fact, I'll give you a few stars just to feel extra special. That's excellent. Okay, so that's very, very good that you were able to handle working with these square roots and radicals. Remember this right here, this little um, symbol in mathematics, most people look at this as, this is in fact a square root, but it's also what we call a radical because I could be like, oh, take the seventh root of something. Now this is no longer a square root, okay? Technically, a square root is this little symbol with a little two up here, but we don't write it uh, in that manner, okay? So again, I'm using uh, these terms, square roots and radicals, somewhat interchangeably in this particular problem, but just so you know, we really are kind of dealing with uh, radicals in algebra, okay? So if this little video was interesting, matter of fact, whether you got it right or wrong, if you learned something, or if you kind of, kind of confirmed, hey, that you got strong algebra skills, go ahead and consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, basic to advanced mathematics. My goal is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of all the content that I have and all the content I will be making, but all my best content will be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.